Amazing. That's our judges. Everyone, a big round of applause for our judges. Thank you so much for joining us, judges. I promise it is going to be a true battle on this stage. It's almost like Dragon's Den here. They're going to be competing for the winner of our startup pitch 2023. So without further ado, I believe it is time for our first startup. So as I said before, they're going to be pitching to you for three whole minutes, and then our judges will have five minutes just to ask them some questions. So make some notes. And please, audience, please be listening. Make sure to rate every single one of the startups because I want to know who is your winner before we find out our judges' winner. So without further ado, it's time for our first startup. This is API Verse coming all the way from Poland. They are helping to simplify the development of all blockchain-based projects. So come on stage. Uh, hello, my name is Wojciech Litwin and I'm a founder and CEO of the Appiverse. But before I tell you a little more about our project, I need first to tell you about the issues with the current web free solutions. Uh, we all know that web free is an evolution from web 2, but web 3 is still lacking quality, usability and simplicity of web 2 projects. Web3 just does not provide the data in such a friendly and simple way as Web2. And it doesn't matter how experienced you are in this market, because the data is still not as accessible as in Web3, and we know that Web3, Web2 was released more than 20 years ago. So let me introduce you to the Appiverse, the more elaborate and the more complex Appiverse uh, data provider in the blockchain ecosystem. So we are supporting three types of clients to cover the market needs. So first one, we are supporting blockchain-based projects. We are providing them raw data, uh, dashboards, and vis visualization tools, and data analytics. For classical Web2 companies, which are just going into the crypto space, we are providing low-code solutions which are highly customizable for their needs. And for blockchain enthusiasts, we are providing dashboards and friendly data analytics. So instead of spending hours of coding, you can create more than 80% of your solution just in one place by a few clicks. And this is just a fraction of what Appiverse delivers. You may ask about our competitor. Of course, we have competitors, but their solutions are, are either too complex because you need special developer who is accustomed to their solution, or they are not sufficient enough for the client needs. Our team have worked and advised to more than 200 projects, and we have people in team who are specialized in marketing, in legal, in technology, uh, who have developed and delivered technology to multiple of projects. Uh, so just, ab just about me, even I'm CEO, I'm a technical pe uh, person with more than 20 years of experience as I'm software architect. Also, I have some uh, successful startup in my portfolio. So now let's look at the numbers. Based on assumptions, uh, in 2029, the blockchain market, the technology market, will, uh, will be valued at 163 billion. Just imagine that Appiverse will cover just 0.1% of that, and this is just the very modest assumptions. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, API Verse. Okay, judges, it is time for some questions. So who has some questions? So if you if you allow me, uh, I, I haven't really understood like the use cases. I understand that we're talking about the market adaptation, so you are focusing on Web3 users, opening them up to uh, Web2 solutions like games. But is it going beyond that so far? And if yes, like, could you quickly provide us with some good use cases? Uh, yes, of course. We are covering, I could say, all the blockchain market in terms of data because we are providing uh, all the data uh, from every block. So for example, every transaction, every NFT transfer, uh, every DEX trade, 
uh, every uh, everything, every interaction with smart contract. We can provide this data uh, in uh, in tools that are consumable for any Web two developer. So, for example, like web uh, web web services, uh, REST REST services, web hooks, GraphQL. So, in general, every blockchain project can get the data they need. Uh, in a very simple form without uh, without the need to, uh, to delve deep into the blockchain itself. Um, so you mentioned in your presentation that uh, you're helping Web2 enterprises and developers to transition to Web3. How have you validated the demand for that transition? Uh, so uh, we have uh, we have worked with uh, I, I said uh, something about 200 projects from Web3, but uh, to get the classic uh, Web2 company into Web3, they need the data from the blockchain, and we are gathering all the data. We are transforming all the data, all the uh, all the data from interaction of smart contract and blockchain is based from transactions and smart contract interaction. And because of that, uh, which we provide in very simple and friendly form, and of course, uh, user interface for that, if it is for uh, project needed, we will provide the data. So if we are providing all the data from the blockchain, I'm sure that we will address specific needs from a Web2 project. You guys support a lot of different blockchain projects comparatively to your competitors. That seems to be the, the biggest distinction how has that impacted the early revenue that you have achieved? Uh, so uh, supporting so many uh, blockchain uh, has this issue that there is a lot of data to processing and with that data, there is a lot of cost associated. But uh, it is quite easier to support so many block blockchain than you could think because there is most of the traffic is on four or five top blockchains. All these other blockchains are, I could say, gathering only a few percent of the of the traffic itself. So only small fraction of data, of processing power, of storage power is needed for supporting so many blockchains. So it doesn't affect so uh, su such uh, in such a way costs as you could uh, as you could say. And in 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 the matter of revenue, right now uh, we are before even our funding. So right now we are we, we don't get any revenue. We are just before that. Any other questions, judges? It seems that you've answered all the questions. Oh no, here we go. We have one more question, Rosen. Hi, what's your what? Uh, I know that you're not getting any revenue right now, not generating any. But what's your planned business model? How are you planning on going after, and how are you pl planning on getting after customers? Uh, okay, so. Uh, in uh, our uh, other companies and with our other experience, we have worked with a lot of blockchain projects. We provided them data, we provided them ready to use solution, mostly in form of software as a service, and in many cases, customized solutions. And because of that, uh, we know what are the costs associated for the client with uh, different solutions, and we know uh, what, uh, what kind of uh, revenue can we can we expect? So right now we are uh, expecting to uh, we are expecting to break even in three years time. Of course, it all depends on the on the market, because blockchain is very volatile. So if we will have bull run uh, around the corner, it can happen very fast because uh, during the bull run the IT services are skyrocketing skyrocketing in terms of cost. And because of that, we could be overcrowded with uh, needed for, for solutions. Uh, and re regarding uh, acquiring a client, we have very deep, uh, very wide connection of, uh, of partners. And this is the first thing that we will uh, get from. Okay, and that is our time up. Uh, Thank you very just, much. A big... Sorry, just a quick question. Okay, uh, okay. But three years to break even in our time, you don't believe is really too far? Uh, well, it all depends because uh, as I said, we are right now. Uh, we are right. We are right now before fundraise. We are starting right now our seed round, and during that time, we will gather the gather the uh, capital, and of course, we we will uh, during that time evolve. But I think, as you, if you will analyze other infrastructure blockchain infrastructure project, and we'll see their revenue, this is uh, this is not as green as I could say. So uh, to be fair, 
I think that this is this is the appropriate time. No, some uh, not not possible to uh, to fulfill scenario. These are hard facts that we that we analyzed and. That is all we have time for. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's five minutes go so quickly. But thank you for a big round of applause once again for API Verse. Thank you so thank much. You. Amazing. There's so much tension here. I feel like everyone has so much to say, but we really don't have time to answer all questions. So we need to move on. And our next startup is Shelter of Exiles, which is from Poland. And they are combining gaming with Web3 to guarantee fuel security in the metaverse. So please welcome SEO, SOE, I should say. Yes, please to come to stage. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's awesome to be here. Uh, my name is Mo Garcharek, and I'm a uh, co-founder and managing director of Pixel Traps, which is a co-founder and general developer of Shelter of Exiles project. Uh, in Pixel Traps, we have a, a talented and skilled team, complementary team, to fulfill the whole range of production uh, from game design to its release. Um, uh, in uh, last year, in 2022, we start up our own, working on our own IP that utilizes the blockchain te technology, which is the Shelter of Exiles. The Shelter of Exiles is a fantasy role-play adventure game um, for solo or multiplayer, where players develop their characters, they uh, create alliances, they, they, they fight for their glory, uh, and the big part of the game is escort mechanics. Then Shelter of Exiles, our vision is to bring Web2 players to the Web3 realms. And we are doing this with the technology that helps, uh, helps players seamlessly come from the, um, they can easily log in through, the, through their emails and the backend takes care of creating the non-custodial wallet for them so they can truly own the assets they earn throughout the game. The gaming industry is, uh, very, is massively huge. And according to the statista.com, the projection for uh, market revenue in 2023 is over $330 billion. And the, in 2022, role-playing and adventure game segment has took revenue share of 36% of the market. In comparison to the blockchain gaming market, uh, it was valued in 2022 for like $5 billion. So we have like huge market opportunity to introduce our game to the Web2 and Web3 players. To do this, we have uh, confirmed partnership agreements with Web2 and Web3 platforms, and still few more are ongoing. Uh, keeping this potential of mind, the Shelter of Exiles game has been created as the game as a service, uh, in which the revenue streams come from microtransaction, player to player tax, and. Okay, that is time up. So sorry, Shelter of Exiles. But round of applause, first of all. Come on now, guys. I know how difficult it is being on this stage. You have three minutes. It is really tough. You did so well. And we now have some questions from our judges. So David, go for it. Sure. Uh, a little bit of a comment with questions. I'm blessed yeah. to have several TV shows about pitching. And uh, a suggestion is really understand your own skills and your own knowledge that best represents your desire. And I see a lot of people that try to be or do something that someone else may be able to do better than them, because I'm sure that business really intrigues me. I understand the market, I understand the space. And a lot of times as leaders, we wanna make sure that we find the best people to do things that we don't do. And it, when you're an investor that spends millions of dollars, I'm always looking for a humble entrepreneur that says, look, I'm a genius 20 years in this and I've created this, but I can't articulate the quantitative value of it as well as someone else that may not even really understand the critical business issues. So my question to you is, why didn't you ask for help with your pitch? Uh, because we, we truly believe that Web2 players are still afraid of Web3 technology. And we believe that blockchain technology is going to take uh, the world and more and more games will, will come to the blockchain technology. 
players now don't have the knowledge about Web Web3 realm and they kind of afraid of you know creating the wallets. That's that's uh, keeping them back from those games. And we believe that uh, we can um, instruct players how to get into this world. So they don't they don't have that obstacle like uh, blockchain technology. They they go in, in like to like ordinary game. And uh, the backend creates the wallet, so they don't have to take care of them. And then they are ready. The game will introduce them to this, how they can use it, how they can share with other people, how can how they can um, uh, take benefits from uh, the crypto and blockchain. Yes, best part of your pitch. Speak from your heart. Yes. Uh, now, I have one question. Yeah. Osmin you mentioned you're trying to bring Web2 players to Web3 Arena, right? And those are two different, let's say, type of clients or type of customers. Uh, what's your acquisition strategy for your customers, considering that you're targeting two different, uh, yeah. uh, uh, let's say, players? Mm, yeah. Uh, we created the economy combined with tokenomics. We create the uh, system that uh, freemium players and premium players can connect together. Premium players are mostly those who are not familiar with the blockchain technology and they are afraid to pay or, or something. Premium players, they have money, they may be used to the uh, cryptocurrency and they, uh, they're willing to buy stuff. So premium players spend more time in the game, uh, acquiring assets, doing some different missions and taking different uh, assets so they can put them on the market and share with the premium players. I understand that, that, that part I understood well, I think it's very interesting. The point that I'm trying to make is more into, you mentioned like someone that is already playing the game. I mentioned like how to attract the player to the game. I think there's a variety of games out there. Okay, how it's we going to take them? Drink them. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, the last last month uh, we have been on the PGA, post Game Arena, which is one of the biggest uh, gaming events in the Europe. We have like over a thousand players uh, playing our game and we have very positive feedback, so we uh, we are willing to push forward the project. Um, and according to this, we are preparing the demo so for broader audience that will be released in February 2024 on the Steam Next Fest. So this is the uh, first um, very important point to get attention of broad audience of players in, into the game. Uh, other stuff that we are doing, we have a partnership agreements with play uh, gaming platforms that will push forward uh, our game to the... Um, gaming uh, community uh, uh like first it's okay yeah. um quick question about the retention like i mean for games it's very extremely important the retention like yeah. what is your retention days three day seven and then sir day 30 i don't believe you have statistic yet uh we don't have that statistic yet because what about day three and then day seven uh I'm... you don't have retention statistic uh, for the game, no, because it's not uh, launched. Yet. Ah, it's not launched. But you tell me you have thousand beta testers. Yeah, but, I mean we have like the venue like this, and players will come to our uh, uh, stand and they will play the game. So it's like like two day event, so they can uh, check the game and try the mechanics, and we could get the feedback to check if the game player likes the game or not. If we could stop the game or if we push forward the project. I think we have 10 seconds left, so I'm going to go for it. So, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yes. it's come through. Thank you. Um, so, in terms of the you guys, why are you the ones to go after this market opportunity? You mentioned this huge opportunity. What's so special about you and your team? Well, uh, what I said before, it's like there's no game that tries to introduce Web3 realm to the Web2 players, and we are going to do this. Sure. I mean, you personally, what is it that you have as an individual that will okay. help you to beat the competition? Uh, okay. I am very passionate about the games. I play games from like childhood, and I created the team that are passionate about playing games and creating games. There we go. Okay, time is up. So sorry, I have to bring a limit to it. Thank you. Big, big rounds of applause. Thank you so much. Okay, so my advice to any startups that are coming on the stage, just shake it out a little bit before you come on stage. This is all about having some fun as well. I promise our judges will not bite. So just be yourselves, let loose a little bit and just have some fun. Explain your business and why it's so amazing. So doing that next, we have Sharkgate, who's coming all the way from Finland and they are a specialist in website cybersecurity. Big round of applause, everyone. 
Hey! Okay. Hi, um, can everybody hear me? Great, okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Matthew Morell. Uh, I'm Chief Marketing Officer uh, and Co-Founder of Sharkgate. Uh, I wanna start by throwing a few stats at you, if that's okay. Um, there's approximately 2 billion websites uh, in the world. 18.5 million of these websites are currently infected uh, as a cause of cyber attacks. In 2025, it's predicted that the cost of fixing these cyber attacks is gonna be about 10.5 trillion US dollars. Um, what you're seeing here is um, a screenshot of our live attack map, because we take it really seriously and we're really passionate about it. So who is Sharkgate? Um, well, we love sharks, firstly. And secondly, it's one of the largest, uh, uh, and sorry, it's one of the leading uh, website cybersecurity um, tech platforms out there. We, um, we have a very innovative proprietary AI system, and um, uh, we want to revolutionize the industry uh, and make the internet a safer place for everybody. So where do we stand today? Um, well, we've uh, one of the most innovative, advanced, and um, technologies out there, and uh, we're unrivaled in, in the way that we use the technology. We're growing and we're a profitable business. We have a deep understanding of AI and machine learning tech, and that brings huge value to our clients and is changing the industry very positively. We've built our solutions on the problems that our clients face uh, day to day, and we provide them with a 24 seven support network. Uh, we're now at the stage where we want to look into scale up our business, and we, um, this might also include the Shargate IEO. So why is our technology so innovative? Well, it's cloud-based. It combines cutting edge AI and machine learning technology that learns from and transforms attacks into a robust layer of immunity for any website that we protect. Think of it this way. The more attacks we get uh, and we encounter, the more we learn and the stronger our network gets. Um, we use three pillars of defense for that, for, for that, uh, that, that technology. The Shargate firewall, uh, Shargate AI, which we call Deep Sea, and Shargate's website threat defense database. Importantly, we actually reward our clients for sharing their anonymous attack data with us so that we can learn more and protect them better. Um, we also reward them with Shark tokens, which they can redeem about other services should they wish. Um, who uses our services? Well, uh, we have a growing client base covering all different types of websites from small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large corporates, our solutions are used by some of the uh, largest website hosted businesses in the world, as you can see some of them here. And we have a very strong client focus and client um, uh, rating, 4.8 out of 5 on Trip, uh, Trustpilot, an excellent rating, which is fantastic. We take it really seriously. Almost there. Um, why is our technology better? Okay, so I said it was cloud-based before. It's deployed and leverages infrastructure on Cloudflare, Azure, and AWS. That is time up. Really? Sorry, we have to stick to the time limits, but you have got five minutes of sure. questions, so I'm sure we're going to cover sure. some of the things I you're going to say. I had the most say. slides. Thank you for bringing so much energy as well. Round Another round of applause, everyone. Okay, judges, what questions do we have for Sharkgate? Shoot. Uh, Alexi? I think I'm more close to, uh, from everybody, consider I have companyservice.com before. <laughs> Sure. Uh, basically, my question is like, what is your model working with uh, hosting providers? So I can't really hear you. Uh, what is your model working with the hosting providers? Just clear revenue share, you have integration with them, how you work? So, your gentleman, I'm going to answer your question very shortly, but your, your colleague here said the best people to answer the question aren't always the people who do the same job. Uh, I would love to answer your question in detail, but I'd probably mess it up. So what I will do is, if it's possible, to talk to you, answer your question by one of my colleagues who is more the technical side. Is there, a, uh, is the colleague here? Mark, Mark here. Mark, why don't you just come on up and answer the question? Oh, well, Mine as well. Go for it, Mark. Oh, we have some moments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, basically, like, I, from, I have hosting provider before myself. It's a company, service.com. Yeah. Yes, and uh, what you mentioned here, host gather and everybody, I know the, all these companies. And my question is very simple. How you work with them? How you achieve cooperation with them? Okay. And what is, uh, why is integrate you? And what's the type of co integration cooperation? Because this is what is your business model. Yeah, so uh, our service is able to, we, we're able to sort of add this to a hosting package. So if you say we're signing up with GoDaddy or, GoDaddy or a hosting company, you can add, add on our cybersecurity product onto it. Um, it's very simple. We're using DNS. So, um, what we do is we point 
the traffic through us and then onto the actual host itself. So there's no technical change to the actual um, website itself. Um, it, it is more a network layer uh, change, but what's happening is all that request data is then coming through us, we're analyzing it, and then we're, we're doing the blocks and preventing stuff going onto the host. So, I just, but, that... uh, I understand you just Excel layer, like a, you put really kind of Cloudflare, yes? We have Cloudflare, so uh, Cloudflare is great for DDoS protection, and it's good for some, some sorts of attacks. But what we are doing is uh, we're learning from uh, traffic that looks actually okay. And we are actually working out with AI and our learning, machine learning, that this traffic actually, although it's coming from, say, Hong Kong and looks like a genuine request, it's not. So we're then blocking it at the Cloudflare level. So well, my quick question, we have to limit the application level. How you handle attacks on application level? Because this is the most problematic part. What yeah, you're so, saying is very simple. Like, what about application level? Yeah, so we're stopping the attacks before they get to the host, right? So it, it's actually between the visitor and Cloudflare. So you, you're going from that. So the request is going from the visitor through to Cloudflare. We're blocking it at the Cloudflare level. So it doesn't actually get to the application layer. Ah, okay, F last question, just uh, how much revenue you have now? How much, sorry? Revenue. You told me you're profitable, just how much revenue? So uh, we're currently turning over about uh, 250,000 a year. 250,000 a year. Okay, thanks. David? Uh, quick question. You guys said your scaling strategy was fundraising. Part of it. What does that look like today? Um, well, we, we, have, we have... Oh, you we guys have, don't need money, I guess. We, 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 we're at the stage now where we've got a great product. We don't have a very good sales and marketing team at the moment. We need to build up that side and start uh, forging alliances with hosting companies. Um, you know, at the moment we are reaching out to some of the hosting companies, but we're doing it as a small team. We need more sales and marketing to get out there. So, so just to answer your question, any, any investment that we, we would take on board would absolutely be used uh, as part of a strategy to an integrated strategy. You have to a rate, are you currently raising money? Yeah. But, but that's what we want to do. We want yeah. to, okay. Yeah. So how, we're, right, yeah, we're right, we've got the best foundation, we've got the best tech, we've got the best people. Come see me after. Grow, yeah. <laughs> how much are you raising, uh, what's the valuation? That's a good question. Well, this is oh. how much. How much? How much do you think it's worth? <laughs> I mean, the market. The market is. That's, that's a dangerous question. We've watched Dragons Den. Right? <laughs> I want to see how in touch in reality you are. <laughs> What's the risks to your business apart from obviously uh, needing to strengthen your sales and marketing function? What um, are the risks? I mean, I guess the risk is there could be other players that come in and have huge funding and like try to dominate. I mean, we are kind of groundbreaking at the moment, but we've done it self-funded. So we've not had any money to really go after the big ones. And, and to answer your question, uh, we're, the, we're the only company of our type who uses our type of technology and the AI and machine learning. Uh, competitors actually use old technology, which is slow to market, expensive to do, quite draconian in its, in its way, and actually it ends up in poor, uh, poor client reviews. And, and some clients from them come to us to fix their problem. Okay. Good answering because that is time up. Thank you so much, Sharkgate. I really appreciate it. That definitely stimulated our judges. So it was great to see so many questions. Jarek, I promise next time you're getting your question in. Okay, moving on to our next startup. This is Skyrocket coming all the way from Georgia. They are providing traders with powerful trading platform connected with multiple exchanges. So please come to stage, Skyrocket. Round of applause, everyone. Come on, let's get some energy in here. Come on. Woo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm Lucas. I'm a business developer at Skyrocket Trade. And every professional trader or a crypto influencer is expected uh, to take someone's funds and invest it for them. So if uh, from our research, currently there are over 15 million people in the crypto space looking to have their funds managed by a third party. Uh, if, if you went for, if a professional trader went for this type of deal, it would require sending funds or signals to each other. Both of these are time consuming and not optimal. Skyrocket revolutionizes this process by allowing you to connect to your trader using API keys, which means your funds remain securely in your account with no withdrawal access granted. Your chosen trader can execute positions and manage your assets without a direct need uh, to your funds. Uh, it ensures a 
peace of mind. And that's just the top of the iceberg. Skyrocket is official broker for Binance and OKEx. Our unique trading tools you won't find anywhere else, like shadow trading, trailing orders, and our unique copy trading solutions ensure you always have an advantage over the market. Our revenue streams are the transaction fees, and basically trading volume and subscriptions. A trader managing a group of a thousand people generates us $10,000 from revenue monthly. By the end of this year, Binance Futures integration is our key focus, with two white labels sold already and three more to go. The, second, the first quarter of 2024 means introducing uh, other crypto exchanges uh, like KuCoin uh, and 10 white labels sold. Uh, the second quarter of 2024 uh, is going to be around uh, developing our traders and bots marketplace. Currently on Skyrocket, in Core Skyrocket team, there are 10 people. Half of them are focused on development, operations, and marketing, and the rest are developers. We are here because we are looking for investors as we want to push the marketing further and develop, develop the platform itself. Also, we are looking for traders who are managing trading groups. Oh, perfect. Under time. Okay, amazing. Well, it's time for questions. Derek, do you have one? Yes, you're allowed to go first this time. All right. So a quick question regarding the US piece. So when uh, when I hear like a trading platform, obviously, there needs to be like an edge you use in order to acquire new clients. So what are your edges there? What, what do you compete with? So basically, our edges are shadow trading. That th This tool makes uh, your fund like you had more money. Basically, you can open several positions. Uh, let me explain this in details. If you have $100 and you want to buy BTC, it would be nice if it dropped to like 37, 36,000. And also you also want to buy Ethereum if it dropped to uh, 19,900. And it works that you can place both of the orders with the same money. So you don't have to split the money for two transactions. You can basically uh, put two orders with the same money, like you had more money and uh, and yeah, and the first one that is going to hit the price level that you expected is going the is the one that is going to be executed. Uh, sorry, just a quick uh, question. Basically, you want to give more leverage to the people. Our main goal is to uh, attract, since uh, there are so many people looking for someone to invest for them. We are building solutions uh, for traders managing trading groups. So basically, you connect with your trader and he manages all your assets. And yeah, that's, that's all. No, but this is not what I ask. I ask a very specific question. The term is that you, with $100, you can have two positions open. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Does it mean you give more leverage? No, no, no. It's not related to leverage. Basically, uh, this order is not sent to the order book. So it doesn't appear on the exchange. So no market maker can see it, nobody. So basically, the, uh, the, your order is waiting on our platform. And if you have uh, these two but, positions... But how you want to execute them? Like if event is happen, then you have a dro drop on the market and you have two, both positions affectable. How you affect this position? I, I don't quite uh, get uh, what you... One minute. We have drop of market. Uh -huh. And both positions, Ethereum and Bitcoin, but you can pass it. Of course, uh, I don't know. I get it now. But uh, it's... I don't think it's possible to happen that the two assets in the same time have the execution price that you, that you assumed. It's not possible, in my opinion. Well, I see this so many times when market drop. But you, you know, you have to have the exact price where you place your order. So. Okay. Uh, but my question is very simple. Like, what does make you more different as a platform than anybody else? Yeah. So, as I was speaking, shadow trading, that's the main tool. Also, our copy trading solutions. There is no other. But copy platform. trading, many have. What is really different? Uh, copy trading, many companies have. But ours is different. Basically, uh, if you were to copy trade on Binance, it only follows the your chosen trading actions. It doesn't measure anything like your account size or how much do you want to buy. And thanks to our solutions, the trader you chose can directly manage your account. So. If uh, your account uh, is small, for example, it buys a small percentage and it doesn't follow 
all of the traders action basically he can just choose your account and do transactions there but uh, ito offers the same one sorry ito mm -hmm. offer more a similar service right now um, i don't believe that's quite similar to ours because you can just choose uh, which account you're operating right now of your trader the, the just you Question. Sorry, I yeah, um, just want to get but, in here. Very um, quickly, then. So, if, if how you about are, the? Oh, sorry. Go on. You go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, if you're able to manipulate or influence like the um, the performance of your the other users' wallets, like does it bring any regulatory issues related to that? Like, what's your take on that? No, it doesn't, because we are only offering solutions. Uh, we are not trading for anyone. Um, okay, Osman, go and for it. What incentives, because this is essentially reputation-based, mm -hmm. you want successful traders yeah. on your platform. What is it that you offer that incentivizes them to come to you over something like Collective2 or eToro or some of the other copy trading? Sure. What do they get? So they offer, we offer additional monetization of the trading business. Basically, the two tools you can earn from sus subscriptions on our platform uh, and also from trading volume because Traders sometimes have someone under their referrals, but referrals on Binance, for example, expire after a year. And with us, you, there is no expiration of referrals, basically all, all the time from the volume generated by the traders. Perfect, okay, time is up. Thank you so Thank much, you. Skyrocket. A big round of applause. Okay, great. Well, we only have two more left. So the next one is School Topia coming from France. Well, there's a lot of energy in this auditorium today, but we're going to have the most energy on this stage. They're revolutionizing middle school math learning. Thank you. <laughs> Round of applause. Come on, everyone. Hello, I'm Leila Ancelin, the CEO and founder of School Topia. So we are a powerhouse of experience. I mean by that we have a very experienced team and the goal is to tackle the challenges we have with the startup. So a bit about me, um, I'm, uh, I have been a teacher of science and math for 10 years. So I saw a lot of students from middle school, high school and university level. And uh, I saw the education system is broke. And I, as a teacher, I had to do something. I had to have a big impact. So I, I wanted to offer through technology a tailored solution called Schooltopia. So Schooltopia is the first platform using an online educational comic. So we have also an AI part, an AI teacher. And the goal is to help the teenager to get better at math. So we have two products. We have the story mode. So we offer um, a story. We build an entire universe of science fiction and you can follow the content through a comic. You need to help Toshi, this little robot, you can see, and uh, you, can, you have to apply math to solve the problem. And we have the homework mode. So it's based on AI, uh, the GPT model, and we are fine tuning it. So you can speak with Toshi through a chat. You can ask questions, he can answer, uh, he can give you exercise, personalized exercises, correction tips, etc. So now we, we started in a French market uh, last year. We have raised the first round with French Business Angel. And now we want to target the European market. We are in the Supercharger Acceleration Program in Malta. And uh, we with this um, goal, we want to... Uh, to raise the second round, uh, we want to target 100,000 users and to have uh, 20,000 uh, revenue monthly. So we have a, a business model. It's a freemium model. You can access to limited content. Uh, you have also a monthly subscription of 20 euros and an annual subscription of 149 euros. So the metrics for the French market, we have more than 1,000 users. Uh, we have a very uh, active community as well. So we want to copy the giant. That's the goal. Uh, what, uh, what are the differences? So we, we offer a comic and an entire universe with Toshi, and we have the artificial intelligence. 
So we want to raise uh, 750,000 in the seed round. The goal is to target 100,000 users and so on. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Sportopia. Judges, what questions do we have so, regarding this? May I? Thank you. Yes. Uh, it's not entirely clear exactly what AI is doing in your solution. Can you talk us through that? Yes. Uh, Specifically. Yeah, um, we are offering uh, an AI tutor uh, in math. So it's Toshi, the little robot. You can speak with him through a chat. You can ask questions. He can help you um, make your homework. You can have personalized exercises. You can review your exam with him. Uh, it's a real help. So the issue there, I was looking for a calculation on uh, ChatGPT and it got it wrong. And I had to tell the AI algorithm yeah. the correct answer. And then it just gave me the answer I just gave it two minutes ago. How do you trust that the, the algorithm is actually giving you accurate information? Yeah. Um, the, the hallucination model, problem. In, the model is based on our data. So, you know, we have the story mode with all the lessons and the quizzes. It's based on, based on it. So it will be pick something from our data, so it can be uh, wrong, you know. Um, and so we want to implement a personality in Toshi because we have the story with the comics, so we want to link to the story mode as well. So uh, it can be a, a bond between the user and Toshi, it's the goal. George, all right. So, uh, well, personally, I'm, I'm a fan. I love ad tech. Uh, however, as much as we can love ad tech, I mean, what, what is usually a challenge is to measure the impact. And one of the approaches, you know, when it comes to measure impact is to basically sit on top of the uh, engagement, trying to quantify it somehow. So in terms of like uh, metrics like uh, engagement, retention, like uh, could you just give us a little bit more details here? Like, you know, how engaged this users, the kids are and, and basically are there any growing trends? Are you measuring, you know, anyhow? Like, what's your take on that? Um, so firstly, the goal is to attract free subscribers. It was our uh, goal, firstly, with the first round. So we succeeded because we have a very uh, acquisition cost very low now for attracting these users. And now we are trying to work on retention. So we are sending a lot of email and we built a gamification system as well so they can earn points badges they can come back to we we are um, attracting them to to say hey you you didn't finish all the content you can earn this amount of points so it's a way to to retain them uh, and we are working on it now and, and would you be comfortable sharing some some statistics here in terms of retention how how did you perform or how have you performed like over the last month here um, we have between uh, 100 to 400 uh, people that are coming each month on our platform. So it's an average. <laughs> um, like my friend here, I also invest a lot in attack, especially as an Asian investor. And I'm wondering exactly what is the differentiation here? Because to me, the AI part, it looks from what you described me more as a chat bot than a very deep uh, attack AI. And the play here is more into the gamification, which I've seen so many companies doing. So can you tell, without being hard, I apologize, but can you tell me what is exactly is the differentiation between this uh, platform and the numerous others that are trying gamification as well to teach kids and engage kids? Yeah, we built an entire universe. So we have different characters. We have a comic, so it's new. Anyone there doing it. Um, and also, um, the gamification system is new, so we, we started, but we have a lot of plans uh, about it. So that, that's actually a good uh, a good approach. That have that have your own characters and so yes. on, because then you can create a, a love engagement between yeah. the kids and the that's characters. The goal. So how are you working on that side? How you're working like how do I find a character, being love with the character, and then I'll go to a platform to learn from this character? Are you doing, I don't know, YouTube videos, like TikTok and things like that? Yeah, um, it's the plan with the second round. We want to invest a lot in marketing, in, in social media, to create content, to share our comic, to do animated uh, character with voices, to attract uh, the customers. That's the goal, so. David, did you have a quick question as well? Yeah, real quick. Uh, you have uh, story mode and homework mode. You have testing mode? 
<laughs> testing one? What do you mean? To test the, the acquired knowledge. Uh, so you mean the quizzes? or yes. yes, it's done in the story mode. So you have in one, uh, we have uh, four uh, years of middle school. And uh, I can continue. Um, I, I think, I mean, you're yes thinking, is an answer. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I think that's fine. Yeah, uh, quizzes. Sorry, you just got to ask. Uh, but uh, you know what? Like, I I have school myself in Cyprus. We have 800 kids who's going to school. My question is like, I mean, math is good, but which curriculum? Because like, it's important about which system actually you're studying for. Because my kids, for example, in my school, we are in IB system. And which system you are? Because mathematics uh, is very broad, but still, which system? Uh, we are based on the French curriculum for now. French so the, only, the, yes. The, the application is in French, and the goal, because we are targeting European markets, so we want to translate into English and adapt uh, the curriculum uh, to more the UK markets, because it's the first big uh, market in Europe. Uh, for and uh, my co second question, actually, <laughs> I, I saw that like you on B two C model to attract yes, clients, B2C. B2C but why you don't go to B two B? Because it's very long the cycle of selling. Uh, we are in contact with a French Minister of Education, but it's one year, and we are trying to test our um, um, product in uh, in classes, but it's very long because there are a lot of bureaucracy of norms. Okay. Thank you. you know. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all we got time for. Big round of applause for Schooltopia. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it is definitely very important. I come from a scientific background. I studied chemistry. So the more we can get children into science, mathematics is really important. So these tools are great. And utilizing technology is amazing. So our final startup for you, this is Vitalentum, this is coming from Latvia, and they are democratizing of creativity and dissemination of content. That was a difficult one to say. Well, first of all, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nicholas from the Vitalentum, and uh, it's a big pleasure for us to be here. So thank you for the organizers to invite us here and give us a chance to present ourselves. What we actually doing? Just imagine you doing some sort of content, you creating content, and then you just find out yourself in a situation, then you have to enter uh, some sort of images into your publication. And then you go to Shutterstock, you get to get the images, and then you find out that you can buy two decent images for $29. It means each one of them is 15. So um, you buy 100, and then you find yourself with a shining big hole into your budget, and that's it. And you go in bankrupt without even starting. I mean, that's a big of a thing. And that's where we come into the game. Who are we? We are innovative social network and we actually share in the passion of uh, free, free content and free creation. So people can share and enjoy all of the content they provide, we provide, and we can do it all together. We decided to create some sort of new philosophy. Is it our target? It embodies two words, which one is, first of all, is art and anarchy. What does it mean? It means that all of the content, it flows freely. There is no royalty, there is no corporate. We share and we use. What we actually, what our goals and what we try to give to people. First of all, we create free, creative community where everyone can share and enjoy art. That's the biggest thing. We plan to achieve more than 1 million of daily visits. Also, surely, we want to dream big and we want to have, we want to hit the top 100 in a crypto market cap in two years. And then we want to become a standard for AA payment systems. What we offer? First of all, we offer as a service image repository where you can store, where you can upload and download pictures. Then we offer, obviously, uh, image generator tools, so you can generate your own pictures. Other content creation and editing tools. And AI language model like ChatGPT4. Speaking about the tokenomics, we plan to integrate the tokenomics system into our project. And how we are different from people? First of all, we're going to utilize the utility tokens, which are, first of all, created to increase and advance ourselves. So we're not just giving out our tokens 
and give, get an offering from back. We're planning to integrate every single penny straight to our own business. But it's all words, so let's go to numbers. We just started in 2023. We already have 1,000 and even more users already using our platform. 100,000 pictures in stock. And we're going to hit this number and right in the end of this that year. That is time, but I'm sure questions from the judges will answer. Thank you. Big round of applause. The judges always have amazing questions. So it's definitely going to answer the rest of the presentation. Judges. Uh, please. Uh, a quick question. Uh, can you elaborate more on your monetization strategy here? Sure thing. First of all, we are going to create some sort of uh, tokenomic system is going to work this way. Uh, first of all, uh, the people are going to pay a small fee for a subscription. So if they're going to use our services, they're going to pay a small fee uh, to buy the points. This point is going to be used to purchase, uh, so for example, video content, audio, uh, maybe some sort of image content. And they're going to get these points back if they actually doing some sort of activities on our platform. So let's say they're publishing the taxes, uh, they're making some blogs, they share on their own creative uh, images, for example, AI created or personal photographs or whatever. So they're getting, uh, get, getting these points back. And uh, we're also going to um, use this tokenomic system to get uh, onto the exchange. So we have our own token and we plan to make it valuable. Judges, any more questions? Uh, to be frank, I did not understand how it went from image repository and art and so on to one phrase in your, last, in your slide that said you want to become the standard payment network or something like that. Uh, the thing is, we going to present our own token system, uh, which is actually fully based on utility, uh, on utility services. So uh, it's not just a thing let's say, uh, a coin which you cannot use anywhere. This one is going to be used in our own ecosystem. So it will have the, the value. So to say the person uh, exchanging his own money to our points uh, to participate into the content creation on our platform. So he's going to share his things, he's going to get the points back. And uh, this uh, token can be used on an exchange. So some sort of BTC, USDT, pretty much the same thing. Please, lady. Lady first. Osman. Are you sure? Okay, thank you. Um, I'm a little bit confused and probably a bit concerned about the autarky concept. When it comes to establishing ownership of rights to prevent fraud, to prevent people appropriating content and then selling it outside of the platform, making a lot of money that they could have actually uh, acquired from one of their peers on the platform. How do you keep people true, if you like? Well, um, it's quite uh, kind of easy because the first of all, we have a preview picture, so you cannot simply just download it without paying us. So if you're going to download the picture, uh, you're going to pay uh, this small amount of points for each picture. And we have uh, integrated some sort of trademark, uh, watermarks, and other things to prevent people from, let's say, stealing from us. But the thing is, uh, it's not about our being, uh, let's say, hidden or close to the community. So we are free to uh, use the pictures that people share with us. So they're going to upload their own pictures and we can use them. And the same goes to them. If they're going to use our pictures, that's perfect. So we don't really, um, we don't really close ourselves you know, from people from, uh, and it's the same, making them not be able to download the picture. So as far as you have points, even if you don't have any, you can just simply get some by commenting uh, on our social network platform, on our forums, you're going to evaluate other people's jobs, uh, let's say create content, and you're still going to get these points. So, I mean, it's not a big deal to get a few points to download a picture. And uh, I guess it's quite easy to, um, in this way, being just simply fully transparent for people, and they're going to bring the back the same but, energy. Right, but then you can go and sell it on the other platform for $20, $29, right? Uh, yes, but the thing is we have meta tax, meta, uh, other meta security things that uh, it's still going to be, uh, providing our own tax somewhere. So, I mean, obviously it's uh, mostly security security thing, but um, yeah, I guess uh, MetaTax and other security reasons we have already integrated going to most likely prevent most of the fraud possibilities. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Rebecca. Uh, you know company De depositphotos.com? Yes. This company was created by my very close friend. 
Uh, he exited this company uh, one and a half year ago for reasons the market is not growing. Uh, sorry, can you repeat your question? I didn't he, he, he exited his company two years ago for the reason market is not growing. And uh, because he stopped believing, he created this company from scratch, he sold his shares. Why you believe what you are doing is actually good on the market right now because it's so big competition and you're really far behind from anybody. Yes, that's true from one perspective because uh, let's say some people have uh, like shutter, so they have millions of pictures. But the thing is, uh, let's say if you're a photographer, you cannot simply get to the to the shutter stock. I mean, because they over there, uh, the content thing, uh, the content library is already too complete with other pictures. But still, those photographers, they carry lots of data, lots of pictures unused. And we're going to use this. So, I mean, everyone coming to our platform can upload his own content and get some sort of comments, uh, some sort of feedback from the people outside uh, of his own, let's say, friends and family. So they're going to share his, uh, uh, his, uh, his, his her feedback, let's say. Sorry, but I mean, it's a little bit too complicated. Like, I mean, uh, like it's a very easy model. Like you have a pictures, you try to sell them, right? Immediately to get some profit. You tell like, I mean, I will create something which my friends will like it. I will get some points and put, maybe I will sell it. Believe me, it's really too complicated. I know how the biz all this business works. I, the sales guys on all events, on conferences, to try to get subscription from B2B customers, from anybody to use their stock. This okay. is business model. Like, what you want to do is completely different. It's far away from the market. Well, the thing is, we're not really focusing that much, uh, most on AI imagery. We also provide other services. So it's not only about the stock image. It's not only simply as a deposit, let's say stock of pictures. We offer text-to-speech. We offer uh, other services like child GPT and AI models. We offer, um, let's say, AI image editors, uh, editor tools, and tons of our instruments, which all on one platform. You know, just uh, my advice to you, like, I mean, uh, in each project should be something which is core, which is core and work. Everything else is come, but core should be important. And what is your core? It's social network. So people sharing their content and sharing <laughs> their feedback. That is all we're going to have time for. So sorry, judges. If you do have any questions for our startups, please connect after. Big round of applause, everyone. We're going to be collecting for all of the judges' scores. Judges, if you don't mind just staying on stage a little bit longer so that we can do the award. Now I want to turn it to the audience. If you have been here during our startup pitch, I want to hear your favorite startup before we announce the winner. So let's get a hand up for APIverse. Any hands up as your favorite startup? Perfect. I mean, you guys have to. <laughs> okay, perfect. How about Shelter of Exiles? Hands up if that was your favorite startup pitch. Okay, interesting. We have a couple of people here. Next up, Sharkgate. Okay, we have a shark going up. That is pretty impressive. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one, Skyrocket. Okay, we have some hands up here. Okay, there's a lot of diversity in the audience of who you actually thought should be our winner. We have Schooltopia. Oh, amazing. Okay. There's a few votes there. And Vitalentum. Okay, we have a lot of support in the audience for Vitalentum. Amazing. I hope you've all really enjoyed our startup pitch. It truly is a pleasure to host with our amazing judges. Please give a big round of applause for our judges as well. It's a tough job up here, but I really hope you've got to see some amazing startups who you potentially would like to invest in and giving amazing advice as well. Thank you so much for your advice for the startups because they truly do need it. They're in the process of raising capital. If they want to expand, we want to create a bigger industry. It's companies like this who are going to be at the forefront of really evolving technology. So thank you for everyone being here today, for participating, to our judges. I believe we're having a count up over there. So yes, I want to see what everyone enjoyed on this stage today as well. Anyone in the audience have anything they've really, really enjoyed today? Okay. Nothing, any talks that everyone's thought, wow, any panel discussions, anyone that's learned anything here today? 
Okay, we've got a couple more hours of being here at AIBC, and we also have tomorrow. So please do listen, take notes, connect with people. Our industry would not have grown as much as it has without collaboration. So please do exchange business cards, take note of what's happening on stage. Look at this amazing panel. Make sure to get some contact details. If you have startups, if you have businesses which need some investment, I'm sure they'll all be really interested can I, in hearing what you do. Can Please, I jump course. in here, actually? Because yes. one thing that I'm doing that might be of interest to startups that didn't make the cut for the six here yep. is that we're running a 30-day business model validation challenge, which starts on Monday. Okay. So the plan is for any startup founder, completely free of charge, joins our community and for 30 days, our team of experienced professionals, investors and entrepreneurs will help you to keep yourself accountable, set challenges that will help you to make your business more investable, specifically around your business model, validating it and going out and gathering the data, qualitative and quantitative, so that you can prove to investors that you know your market, you know your customers. So if you're out there and you want to join us, then please do. Yes, please do. I'm sure there are people out there in the audience who be really interested. So please reach out, collaborate, exchange details. We really do want to build this community and doing things like you are. It's really important. Startup pitches like we've had today. All the feedback. I really have to say the feedback, David, when you're saying to the people that are pitching, come on here with confidence. Believe in what you're saying. I know it's not easy. It's never easy to talk in front of people. But I on, also David. want to say one thing. We um, With Sigma, we partnered. We have an Apple TV show, uh, season five, called Two Minute Drill. So the top six companies from Sigma will be on next season, Apple TV, the show. And each episode, you win $50,000 cash and prizes for the best pitch. Uh, but it's pitch only. Has not You don't even really need to have a company. So it's teaching people how to articulate value with credibility and emotional attachment. Check it out. Actually, season six will be filming. Season five starts Friday. So check it out on Apple TV. I'm super excited to partner with Sigma and these great companies that you have. Yeah, definitely. That is amazing. Wow, that's so cool. There's so much happening here at Sigma. Honestly, this event is absolutely crazy. I got lost for about an hour yesterday trying to get back to the AIBC stage. So there's so much happening here. I believe we have the results. Oh, yes. I get to announce the winner. Okay. Come on. Come on. Show me. Okay. Interesting. So our winner of the AIBC Startup Pitch 2023 is Sharkgate. Come up to stage. Bring, come on. Come on, up, up to stage. Bring the shark along as well. Come on, why not? Amazing. Congratulations. Do you have any things you want to say? Uh, thank you, thank you. Um, sorry, it was a bit rambled and very quick. Um, these are my fellow co-founders. Um, yeah. if, if you've got a website that needs protecting from hackers, go to Sharkgate.net. We, we're offering some free, free trials, so yeah, go there and try it out. Um, just to also say that we are very committed uh, and very passionate about what we do. Uh, we, we honestly do believe that the, the internet should be a safer place to, to for everybody to enjoy. Uh, and, you know, um, hackers ultimately share all of their data and become more intelligent as they share data, whereas people don't seem to share anything, um, you know, by, by, by their business. So we want to create a community where people actually, we share intelligence about hacked data or hacked information um, and then become stronger and just ultimately um, better for it.